then we'd ask the minister to consider that. <clears throat> I call uh, the Honourable Nikki Wagner. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, talking to this Clause 8, really this clause highlights the misleading nature of this bill because it focuses on reviewing the exception and defence provisions, but it doesn't even reference the far more extensive, the far more important medicinal cannabis regime. And of course, that regime is, re is the result of the 29 words in the original bill that opens the door for this provision to be established. As we've heard, Clause 8 requires the Minister to instruct the Ministry of Health to review the exemption and defence provisions. That's the new subclauses 2A and 3A in Section 7. And they must be reviewed within two years. Only once. And I assume that that only once recognises the temporary nature of the exemption in the bill. And although we've discussed that with the Minister, we've discussed the importance of understanding the length of this temporary measure, the Minister is not prepared to include a sunset clause. So here we have a provision to review a temporary measure that only affects a very small number of people whereas there's absolutely no provision to review the substantive part of this bill, which is the medicinal cannabis scheme, which is a significant, important, and long-term change to our community. The legislation required to deliver an effective, safe, and community-supported medicinal cannabis scheme is far more complex far more detailed and far more important than this exemption. And what's more, the medicinal cannabis scheme will affect thousands, perhaps even hundreds of thousands of New Zealanders and maybe even people beyond our shores. Now the issues that Dr Shane Retty has identified and provide in the bill and the legislation that he has worked on illustrates the complexity and the need for review of this particular part of um, Clause 8. For example, his legislation, his bill, covers things like application for licences, granting a licence, eligibility for the licences, who should be able to have a licence, individuals, corporate bodies, who's responsible for them, the safety of the location, conditions and restrictions of licences, the standard conditions, control, staff, how you can undertake things in a specified location, storage, and requirement to work with the Director General of the Ministry of Health. It also talks about reporting on that work, and it also to to talks about offensive. Come but I'm coming back, and the reason that I'm telling you all this is to emphasise the fact that this is significant, complex legislation, and yet there's no opportunity to review it. We're reviewing this tiny little bit, which is the exemption. So it's really all about priorities. And I believe that Parliament needs to be very aware that how we use our resources. We shouldn't be making work we shouldn't be requiring our minister and the ministries or departments to do things that won't make any difference. And this amendment won't make any difference. I think we need to be responsible also for things that are important to the people in our community. We need to carefully consider. We need to closely monitor and review significant legislation that is going to change the way that our society works. And in this case, that is the medicinal cannabis scheme. So I don't support the reviewing of the temporary exemption, but I do support a much more parliamentary super, um, supervision over the med medical cannabis scheme and how it's developed, how it will work, and to make sure that it does deliver those high quality products that we expect at a reasonable price and so we can keep our communities safe. This clause fails on both counts. I call Simeon Brown. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, for the opportunity to talk to Clause 8 of the Mr.